Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Reggae Game Into video, we're going to be discussing and analyzing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with AMD and their 7NM product roadmap. That's right, the company are being very confident with it. So we'll go into some comments from Mark Pacemaster over at AMD in just a moment, and then finish off with further information concerning Vega 7NM and some updates to the drivers. But we'll start out once again with Make Mark Papermaster over at AMD. Uh, he actually took to a blog post and has said that currently our work with DSMC on the 7NM node has gone very well and we are seeing excellent results from early silicon. He also went on record and said that AMD will be focusing its entire portfolio on the 7NM process and that will include Vega 20 and uh, which will be launching this year. Early 2019, we'll see the launch of Zen 2 for the server. That will be epic. And then Navi will appear later next year. And that will be the true successor to Polaris. So that is essentially confirmation that Navi will be coming out most likely, let's say around the midpoint of next year. So what about Vega then? The website Foreignx has reported that there is no longer an experimental driver release for Vega 20 for Linux. Instead, it has moved to much more final versions of the drivers. So AMD are already staging AMD GPU changes for Linux 4.2 to 5, and it's continuing. And some of the latest Vega 20 code, according to Foreignx, is working progress, and it's saying that updating gold, golden register settings for Vega 20 support for second UVD instance on Vega 20. Uh, so that means that there will be two UVDs for Vega 20. PSP 11 will support Vega uh, 20, which is the platform security processor. There's also PSP 11 support, which is platform security processor. PowerPlay based power management, PowerPlay supports also one uh, overdrive based overclocking support, and perhaps most importantly, the experimental hardware support flag has also been removed, which means that the actual drivers slash hardware itself remains in pretty decent shape. In terms of what we can expect for Vega 20, this is not a gaming focused GPU. Instead, this is AMD's way to get extra cash and most likely use that cash in R&D for future GPUs. And it's going to be doing so by, of course, targeting HPC, high performance computing. So that would be like cloud computing platforms and so on and so on. It's a really smart move by the company because if it's targeting deep learning and other such tasks, obviously that is incredibly lucrative. And we can bet that they will eventually over the next couple of years increase their roadmap. And that will obviously mean that they're going to be more competitive to Nvidia and most likely Intel. And we know that Intel will be, of course, jumping in on things with the Arctic sound and then Jupiter sound. And they are looking to do that by, let's say, 2020. At least that's what the teaser that they put out a couple of days ago shows. Now, it's going to be really cool to me over the next year or so exactly what all of these companies are going to be bringing to the table. A lot of folks are saying, well, AMD is screwed because of things such as ray tracing, and that's not necessarily the case. In fact, there are a lot of reports on what we can expect for the next generation of AMD GPUs, including, of course, where I went rather in depth on the Super SIMD architecture. I did a full analysis of that. You can search for it on the channel if you want AMD Super SIMD, and it will pop right up which is really interesting because it's a combination of GCN, which is the current uh, architecture, along with very long instruction word. In theory, at least, that will mean that there is some duality there between high-performance graphics workloads and high-performance compute workloads, and it could be really cool for the company. No matter which way you slice it, AMD are really moving forward on their graphics division. Of course, they are certainly behind right now, but it remains to be played for over the next couple of years. And really, I think their future of their GPUs does heavily depend on what they can bring out before uh, Intel come crashing into the party. And speaking of Intel, we might as well go through some leaks of the 9900K and of other ninth generation Intel processors. We can start things out with a benchmark series which has popped up on Sifsoft Sandra. And this, just for clarification, is for the i9-9900K, which, just to remind everyone, is an 8-core, 16-thread processor. And it represents Intel's first foray into 8 cores 
and 16 threads for the mainstream. So what do we get for this? Well, it's on a gigabyte motherboard and we are looking at, once again, the i9 9900K and it is apparently ranked better than 48.67% of the results. There are a couple of different scores that we can see, and these include GOPS and MIPS, but it's running at 5 gigahertz. Looking at one of the results, and we have 281.22 GOPS, excellent performance, and this was created very recently as well. We've got dry stone int results. I'm not going to read all of those out because you can see them on screen. And once again, the clock speed here is listed at 5 gigahertz. And we have another set of results as well, which this one is, of course, benchmarking slightly different things. We've got 778.73 mpixels, and we've got the multimedia performances as well, all listed out. The performance is pretty damn high. And what's even more impressive, of course, is this does clarify all the specifications that we've been hearing for some time now. 16 megabytes of level 3 cache, 256 kilobytes level 2 cache per core, and so on and so on. And the base clock for these processors is 3.6 gigahertz with a maximum turbo frequency of 5 gigahertz with just a couple of cores active. We also have linked pricing of the next generation processors as well. These include the 9900K and the 9700K, and they've actually popped up from three different stores. They are alza.cz, pc21.fr, and Informatica Zone. Now, these are of the 9900K, the 9700K, and finally the i5-9600K. The 9900K is going to retail apparently at 534 US dollars, that's if you convert euros to dollars and then you subtract the value added tax. The 9700K is expected to cost $416. And so the bottom of the barrel, which is the 9600K, is 257 US dollars. Now, now the 9900K is certainly expensive and I know some people were going to bulk at the price, especially if you compare that to like, let's say the 2700 uh, X. And without question, AMD do rule the roost here. Obviously, when we start benchmarking these things and going into performance, it's going to be really cool. Of course, we did recently uh, also uh, run a uh, article and video where we saw the overclocked uh, performance of these processors hit 5.5 uh, gigahertz quite conservatively on a water cooling setup. And it didn't seem to be anything special. 5.5 gigahertz is pretty damn impressive for an all coil turbo. And it's definitely better than, let's say, the IT700 could muster, well, and certainly much better than the 2700X. Is that going to be worth it to you? The problem is, <laughs> and this is my personal opinion, so feel free to say, no, you're, you're wrong. Um, but my personal opinion is that, let's say you have an, a 16 core, uh, sorry, 16 thread processor, that's really close to what you can pay right now for some of the first generation Threadripper chips. In fact, AMD are basically like completely and utterly discounting those processors. I don't want to say Intel are better than AMD or AMD are better than Intel, but for example, you can get a 12 core processor for like 420 ish? Question mark. Of course, that does depend on the retailer and whether you can get coupons and so on and so on. That just basically means that if you do want that kind of uh, level of performance and you're looking to also plonk down a, you know, an entire new platform anyway, then certainly going that route is not necessarily bad. But of course, then you are losing out on that additional clock speed. Besides, if you really want to kind of compare pricing, the problem with that type of logic then is you then need to get an X399 motherboard, which is more expensive than let's say a Z370 or a Z390 motherboard. Presumably, we don't know their prices yet. And we can also say that, of course, RAM is going to be more expensive as well, because you can't just use a dual channel kit. You would need a quad channel kit for x399 but still i'm not saying you should do that i'm just giving you an option and while we're continuing the subject of intel we might as well also discuss their updated roadmap this primarily affects servers but also other platforms as well and it starts out in 2018 with cascade lake so what do we get with Cascade Lake? Well, as I said, it's hitting the market in 2018 and they're going to be 14 NM processors. We, we know 
that that was going to be the case after all 10nm is being delayed until 2019 so with cascade lake we see the support then for the optane persistent memory uh, that was originally intended to be part of the skylake xeon family just for your fyi so we get a new memory controller in cascade lake to support optane dims and it's also going to support uh, in silicon mitigations for spectre and meltdown as well so that's definitely a positive for Intel. There's a good chance that a lot of folks are going to want to upgrade simply for that reason in the data center. Of course, some folks might also say, well, I'm just going to wait for 7nm Epic and see how that, uh, that uh, compares. But then again, if you need a PC, uh, sorry, a setup right now, that doesn't really help you because AMD obviously will need to wait a little longer to get their product on store shelves, or in this case, data center service shelves. Uh, decided to also adjust the cache system as well and there's also going to be additional AVX512 optimizations that's primarily for machine learning and then we're going to see Cupola SP and that's going to hit the market in 2019. The biggest change there is Bfloat16 which is Google's new floating point format. Cupola 2 is also a 14nm processor. But the good news is it's been confirmed that Cooper Lake and Ice Lake, which is going to hit in 2020, will be compatible with one another. That's been confirmed by Intel themselves. So in short, if you were to buy uh, one, then you would also have compatibility with the other, which is pretty damn excellent. And obviously this does go with AMD's philosophy as well, where at least the have confirmed that if you, for example, own a Epic setup right now, then you can go ahead and put in the Epic 2 processors and there will not be any issues. As a slight uh, aside, I have to say that I do really love AMD's naming convention with Epic. I think that they chose the perfect name there. It's very PR-y. With all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. Normal stuff, like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.